Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again. It's uh, Midweek Wednesday. Hope you're doing well. Um, today was a little bit of a somber day for me. I had to uh, attend a friend of mine's father passed away and went to the wake. For those of you that don't know what a wake is, it's where friends and family pay, pay their condolences and uh, kind of view the body. And then the next day, the uh, the funeral is where they usually say a mass and put him in the ground. But um, I have to tell you something. I've been at my age, and I'm sure a lot of you too have been to a lot of a lot of funerals, a lot of wakes, and it's it's always a a somber moment, you know, when you you see that. But then sometimes you you tend to celebrate if it's a if they had a good life, it's a celebration. And and this man had a good life, but um, you always feel bad for the family that have to deal with the loss. And, uh, you know, ever since I was a kid, when I was about 10 years old, when I first started going to these wakes and funerals, I was always fascinated with funeral cards or memorial cards that they give out at the wake. <laughs> I know. I, I don't know why. First of all, they're laminated. I love anything that's laminated. And they, uh, they had beautiful portraits, religious portraits on the front uh, that were so well done and I just like to look at them. And on the back, they would have a little bit of prayer and usually something about the person and the date of uh, the death that they died. And that's why it's always good. And I was so glad I did. When I first started off, I had them all in a, a small envelope. And I quickly outgrew that as time went on. So now I have a whole stack of them. But it's always a good thing to keep them because as you get older, you tend to forget when people pass away. Unless you write it down or something, which who does, right? So a lot of times, I can't tell you how many times I've had to go back to my stack of, of uh, funeral cards and say, when did that person die? You know, I forget even my, you know, my father, my mother, you want to say, I know the date, but you forget the year. As you get older, the years, you say, well, is that already 10 years old already? Five years they've been gone? 15 years? It's amazing. You're all going to get there one day if you aren't already. So, um, yeah, I have a, a bit of a, a stack of them and. Like I said, some of them put pictures of people on the back, which I think, you know, is nice and remembrances. So if if, uh, if you bit of advice to you younger people, if you do start to go to these wakes and funerals, just keep the cards, keep them, put them in a drawer somewhere. And you'll see when you get older, you're going to thank, thank goodness that you have them. So you can look back and remember and say, oh, yeah, I remember that was oh, 10 years already. It goes so fast. Okay, um, today we got a, uh, a quick project to do. We have a nice pair of pliers from a good friend of mine, Jordan, from Halifax. He was in Canada. And uh, Jordan sent me this and a few other tools about three years ago. But I, I felt like doing these today. Let me show you what okay, they are. For today's project, uh, any of you who follow the channel for a while know that I'm a big fan of all kind of pliers. But probably one of my favorite pair of pliers that I own is this pair here because it's one of the first tools I've ever owned that my, was bought for me not a hand-me-down uh, it was given to me by my mother and I was probably about 15 years old so that's over 45 years old this pair of channel lock and this started my collection of channel lock which I have a you know a, a, a lot of their models I'm a big fan of channel lock fantastic pliers but um they have different sizes, you know, they have the small ones here like this, the large ones. And and as we all know, needle nose pliers do come in handy many times. In fact, when I first got uh, this tool I bought, believe it or not, this is the perfect size for opening. We all have these type bond glue uh, containers, right? And they always get stuck. I mean, these things are always stuck on top. You can't open them, right? This, I found this tool, they should probably sell this with the glue, but you put this in here under, there's a little lip here. You just put it like that and it pops it right up. And I found, and every time I have to use the wood glue container and it's uh, sealed shut and I use this, I say, boy, this is the, probably the only thing I use it for is for that. But uh, I do like a lot of needle nose pliers. And, and a couple of years ago, a few years ago, my good friend Jordan from, he's from Halifax in Canada. He sent me a few tools, and one of them was these gray, you see this gray uh, needle nose pliers? Now, when you have long nose needle nose, there's a couple things to consider. Let's talk about that. Now, whenever you're going to purchase a pair of uh, especially extra long, these are extra long nose, because a typical needle nose pliers would end about there, which would make them look like this, right? 
would end about here. So this has a, an extra length to it. And whenever you're looking for these, you come across in the flea market. Obviously, the first thing you look at is the cutters because the cutters are the, usually the first sign of abuse. But the second thing you have to look at is how they line up. And then you just open it up about a quarter of an inch and twist it from side to side. Now, if they're not a quality pair or they have excessive wear, these things will do this when you do that, when you twist it side to side. And you know, we've all dealt with that because sometimes you have people that misuse these. They put them in something and twist, you know, and they're not meant for that. When you have an excessive seat, this is pretty thin down here too, compared to like the channel lock. You notice the body is a little bit more stout and robust, even though the tip isn't as long, you know? So that's to give it that extra strength because people will always will twist or whatever. Uh, a main thing you have to remember, especially when you're dealing with any of these long ones, is they're not meant for any kind of torquing, twisting like that, because that will, you know, either bend these or put them out of alignment. What they're meant for is basically light duty work. I use these, and I'm sure a lot of you do, use these extra long pliers for picking up screws, things like that, in the chassis of a cabinet, a radio cabinet, or something like that, or like I had to use these the other day to dig out a a double a battery from a flashlight that was corroded things like that that's what it's meant for pull grab you know you can pull it like that it's not going to do any damage but not twisting or anything like that so what do you say we'll clean this up a lot of people were asking about the bluing when we did the uh the cat's paw they wanted to know how to do bluing so we'll blue the handles we'll clean this up real quick and uh, that's what okay. We're the first thing I want to do uh, to make sure we just check everything out. We see there's no markings that we have to keep or anything. The grind on here was pretty straightforward. But the one thing is, you see how sharp these edges are here. There's no reason for that for these to be that. Sh it's just uncomfortable. And when I say sharp, you might not think they're that sharp. But if I could do this, if I could, you know, carve wood with it, right? Then you know that's excessively sharp. There's no reason. That should be buttery smooth, just like the top here. There's no reason for that. So we'll get rid of that when we do it, but everything else looks pretty good. Okay, you can see we took care of all the flat areas here with the flap sander, okay, the flat areas. Here we're gonna to touch it, finish it up with the belt sander on a fine one, and that's where we get this curve too. So you know, no sense in trying to get this with the flap sander, the, the belt, you can do this on the belt and it'll come nice and smooth. We just got the flat areas. Now, this area here, we were talking about this the other day. This is where a lot of people have the problem. See this transition area where the handle comes up to this point? This area here is always a problem because if you try and use a belt sander, the edge of the belt will make little lines there. It's always a, a, a problem and there's no way around it. The only way I found to do it is to take a worn flap disc and this is worn. And when I say it's worn, you can see the edges here. This is where it wears down. And what I like to do is holding it in one hand. This isn't for the faint hearted, but holding it with one hand, you could just drag it. And when you drag it, it's much better. Don't try and push it. Just drag it and follow the contours here. And I'll show you what that looks like. It, believe it or not, it's not as hard as it looks. You just have to have a a strong hand to hold this and I brace it against my okay, body. Okay, this next operation you're going to see here, I'm filming it in real time. So you can see how long it takes. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm taking the edge of that worn disc and I'm just dragging it along the contour. A lot of times with these flap uh, disc sanders, if you drag it, it works much better than if you try and press down or push it. So uh, here you can see I'm dragging up, working my way up to that line and coming down. You could do the same thing with the handles. I'll speed it up a little bit. You could see the same thing with the handles. You just drag it along the contour of the handles and this way it will give you a nice finish and it won't be too aggressive on the pliers. Okay, we're done with the flap disc and the fiber wheel. We blended everything in. You can see how this looks here. And uh, it's just beautiful. Now, remember, we're going to blue the handles in a minute, but I just wanted to show you if you want, really want your bluing to come out, you can't rush this part. This has to be nice, too. Uh, we didn't do any polishing yet. We'll do that after the bluing. But notice here the transitional area I was talking about. This is a tough area for a lot of people just getting into tool restorations. 
is the curve to this area here. And you see how nicely that came out? Because uh, you do it with the flaps in, like I said, you're dragging, and then the fiber wheel blends it in. And we can thank Joe's shop for the fiber wheel. We can all, all thank Joe's shop for that. Cleaned in here with the Dremel. Did all the teeth and everything. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? It's a, it's a nice pair now. Now, it's uh, we'll blue the handles. I'll show you how to do that. A lot of people are asking, but we're done with that. And then we'll polish it later and be finished. Okay, real quick for bluing. First thing we're going to do is we clean the handles good. Wipe it down. You could use acetone. I use denatured alcohol. Just dries real quick. Then take any one of your super blue, any type of bluing uh, solution. It's a liquid here. And I'm using Oxfo Blue by Brownells. And uh, just take this like this. Now, I'm going to show you in real time. And how I'm going to show you, I'm going to take a Q-tip, dip some in here. You see how we have that solution on? Now, the reason I'm using the Q-tip is because when you want to get around this area here, you know, so watch what happens. As soon as I touch it, it turns, well, we call it bluing, but it's actually like a, a almost like a dark gray or black. But you see, I'm using a Q-tip here because I don't want to go over that area here. This is a tight area, but... Over here like this, over here like this, get these areas here. And you see how quick, again, this is real time. You see how quick it's changing color, okay? And that's the the oxidation that's happening right away. Uh, and then take a little bit on a, a rag uh, or a piece of uh, paper towel and do the handles. But you see, I do the top with the Q-tip so it don't go over. Now using a small piece of paper towel, I just uh, dampen it with the Oxo Blue. And now, because we did up here, now you're just gonna run, and that's his actual time. Look at this, look how quickly this turns. And now just go over it a couple times until this gets dark enough, the color you want. And once it gets dark enough like that, you're gonna wipe it off with a piece of paper towel, any excess, and then you're gonna wipe it down with a little bit of uh, mineral oil and that will seal it in and then uh, a little bit of steel wool to buff it out to give it you know to blend in in areas because sometimes it gets a little blotchy as you can see but the steel wool helps get that out any area just go over it here like this keep rotating so you're getting fresh oxo blue onto the the areas and just keep looking back and forth and you see what that looks like, right? You see how dark that is. Now, once your handles are blue, they'll look a little bit chalky, a little bit dull like that. So you take a piece of fine 40000 4-0-0-0-0-4-0 steel wool, put some mineral oil. That's all that Starrett tool oil is, is mineral oil. And take a little bit of that and just gently rub it in and buff it out. And just gently work it back. You're not pushing too hard. All you're doing is you're just saturating the bluing solution and you're giving it a fine buffing over here. And you're just gonna do that. Okay, you're gonna do this a couple times, in and out, all over. Then you're gonna wipe it off, and you'll see a little bit will come off on the on the paper towel or whatever you're using. But then you're gonna buff it in again. And that's it. There we go, that's basically your basic bluing. And then now, it's good to leave some oil on there for a while, just to make sure it, it's, uh, doesn't stay chalky, but what I do is I put a light coat of waxing uh, on it, and then that holds the mineral oil on it. The wax I prefer for bluing is Johnson's Paste Wax. It just seems to go on really easy. It don't abrade. It don't take any, there's no cleaners in it, and it works really well. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what these gray, extra long needle nose pliers look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Now it's finished and you can see here what we did with the handles. You can see here now, uh, it, it's nice. I like it, you know, it comes out good. If you really wanna see good bluing uh, tutorials, go to 357 Magdad, search that. I'll have a link in the description, but just search that. He did a few on um, all different types of bluing. And uh, so that's a real good tutorial, but this is just down and dirty and quick. And you can see it looks nice. The contrast between the dark and the light and look how nice that looks now, you know, and they do cut, you know, I tested them out. They do cut, uh, but again, I don't use these too much for cutting, but you know, in case you did want, uh, these aren't the sharpest cut as compared to the others. The tip looks good. So there we are. This one's in the can. Jordan, thanks so much for these. Really appreciate it. I love a good pair of needle nose pliers. This is gray from Canada. Okay, so in closing, again, special thanks to Jordan for that uh, those nice pair of pliers. And uh, it's 
tomorrow I have Con Ed coming to take care of that, the water coming through my electrical panel, which is always fun, the electrical feed into the house. So hopefully they will resolve it tomorrow. It took me six months to get the appointment, but uh, I'll try and film some of it. We'll see you again on Friday. Take care now. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.